All right, artists, let's jump into another our first all remote project. Super exciting. So the way that remote learning is going to work is I'm going to post these kinds of videos called asynchronous videos. So um, you'll not only be able to watch the lesson, but you'll be able to go back if you need um, if you're doing the project a couple of days later and need to remember something, uh, things like that. I'll also be posting this PowerPoint um in the google classroom just as is if you just wanted to go back and flip through the powerpoint again all right so the um as you can see the title is a personal still life so for those of you who don't know uh, a still life is a piece of art that features only inanimate objects that are both natural and man-made so this wouldn't be like you painting a picture of some like bottles of paint and some boxes and some cups and some flowers and then like your cat being in it or like person being in it. It would just be those objects that are not alive or no longer alive. Um, so we are going to first learn about the pinnacle or like the the most popular type of still life in the art world and that's the Dutch still life. Um, so it is like the, it's the most notable type, as it says in the slide. Um, and Dutch still life in like the 15th century, so in the 1600s, um, Dutch still life was the creme de la creme. Anyway, so the reason for that is uh, there was this trading company called the Dutch East India Company that um, was doing su super, super well in this time period and bringing a wide array of foods and other goods from around the world to their port um to their dutch ports and um people were able to buy things that they weren't before like fresh fish and salt and different things like that and getting uh porcelain and exotic products like that so um, the first artist that we are going to talk about her name is clara paters and um her, she was the kind of uh, main, or not the main artist, but she was actually one of the few female artists that contributed to the uh, Dutch still life genre, but she was one of the main ones as well, which was pretty rare because women um, at the time, it was very difficult for them to pursue any professional career at all, but especially in art. Um, so her and the other still life painters painted these exotic foods and objects displayed together because they wanted to brag about how cool all their new stuff was to the rest of the world. And um, that's still doing so. There are still museums that display these incredible paintings and they're very realistic. Um, so the objects in these paintings, like I'm about to show you in a second, they're not set up like a normal meal would be at a table. It was kind of set up in a way that displayed all of the objects' uh, best angles, maybe um, some really intricate painting techniques uh, that the artists wanted to showcase, um, and they were kind of meant to uh, complement, oh, like the objects were meant to complement each other. So um, here is a Clara Pater's painting, um, and it's called, uh, it was painted in 1611, and it's called Table with Pot, Salt Cellar, Gilt Standing Cup, Pie, Jug, Porcelain Plate with Olives, and Cooked Fowl. Um, so that is a lot of stuff. Um, I just said that is in there, but that's what it is. Um, there are a lot of different elements to this painting that um, make it so unique and show all the wonderful things that were happening um, at this time period in this place. So let's talk about some of them. So I got all these arrows here. The first one I'm going to talk about is this guy right here. This is salt right here. If you guys can see that. Um, so salt was super rare at the time and very, very high in value. Um, and it was uh, super necessary for food preservation um, since in 1611, they didn't really have refrigerators and stuff like that. So if you catch a fish, um, you gotta eat it like immediately or else it's gonna go bad. So salt was super, super necessary for that, but it was very scarce. So they had a large influx of salt coming in at the time. And since it was so um, necessary and valued and important, they put, a, they put the salt in these really, uh, interesting vessels called a salt uh, cellar cellar like if you guys have seen a silo or something it's kind of like that but smaller um what's another one we got on here um we have the olives the olives would have been from greece or something like that to show and the orange over here would have probably been from spain and that shows all of the different places 
um, that things were coming from. This porcelain bowl right here, I have this arrow pointing, uh, would have been from China. Those were super popular at the time, and it showed that they were very, very fancy, classy, wealthy people that owned this china. Um, and the last thing I wanted to point out in this painting was actually this knife. So traditionally at the time, if you were invited to someone's house for dinner, whether it would just be for dinner or for an actual dinner party, everyone would kind of bring their own, would bring their own knife. That was customary. And it was kind of to show uh, social status, how fancy your knife was. So the fact that the knife is included in there was another um, example of social status. And actually a cool little um, a tidbit about that knife is actually has the artist's signature on that. She always um, found a way to incorporate incorporate her signature into her pieces, and it's on that knife right there. So that's kind of showing how fancy and highfalutin she was. So the next artist we're going to talk about, her name you might recognize is Frida Kahlo. She's that lady with the unibrow and all the flowers and everything. Um, these are one of the, this is one of her few still lives. It's called I Belong to Samuel F uh, Fashlich. Um, and he was actually her dentist. She painted this um, still life for him uh, as payment for doing some dental work. So I guess that's a cool way to, cool way if you don't have uh, dental insurance to pay your dentist. Uh, this was painted in 1951. And there isn't a lot of symbolism in this painting, but I wanted to um, talk about it um, because it features a lot of uh, local fruits um, from Mexico, where Frida Kahlo is from. Uh, she was very, very proud of her Mexican heritage, and she often dressed in uh, traditional Mexican clothing, um, and very, very traditional um, at that point in time. Uh, everyone was kind of dressing like people did in America, but she was not, because she was very proud of her heritage, which I'm sure some of you can relate to as far as being from America, or most of you probably. Um, so you see all these local vibrant fruits. She used a lot of bright colors. Um, this is a dog statue. I'm not sure why he's there. I think that she just liked him. She was a big, big animal lover. And you see this Mexican flag back here showing her pride for her Mexican heritage. And she actually signed um, and titled this piece in the painting, just like Clara Paters did with her knife. Um, and it says, um, its English translation is... Uh, let me find it in my notes. It means, um, I belong to Samuel Fashlicht. I was painted with great affection by Frida Kahlo, 1951, Coyoacan, which is actually where Frida Kahlo was born in Mexico and uh, where she died. So that's another look at another artist's interpretation of a still life telling a story. The third artist we're going to talk about um, is a artist named Rachel Rutten. Um, she, this is a work from 2017, so a more modern piece, and she was actually inspired by Dutch still life to set this up, if you can kind of see some similarities between her work and Clara Pater's. Um, and instead of using um, exotic foods, she used um, modern fast food. As you can see, these are all, these are all foods and drinks from McDonald's which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It definitely makes me hungry looking at it. Um, and the reason that she started making these types of works is she wanted to comment on the social class divide in the United States. Uh, while it is um, really great to eat super healthy all the time, it can be super expensive, especially if you want local organic products, things like that. So she is kind of, this uh, photograph is a comment on um, the more accessible accessible food to the masses of uh, members of the United States, or members, citizens of the United States. So that's that. So all of that to say that you will be creating your own still life that um, with objects that have some sort of meaning to you or tell a story. So what you're going to do is gather these objects. Um, you have to have at least three in there. You can absolutely have more than three, but please uh, do not have less. Um, so you're going to gather these objects, maybe from around your home, where you are at the time, um, arrange them in an interesting way. These um, meals aren't obviously set up to be eaten, and also you don't have to use food. You can use whatever you like. I just chose three, a lot of still lifes um, that featured food. But these aren't set up in any particular way, um, uh, functional way. They're mostly set up for um, it to look... the 
composition to look super beautiful and pretty and everything. So try to add some layers to it. If you can, you see um, here you have this layer down here and a layer up here and you have changing heights to all of the objects, things like that. Um, and be prepared to talk about the items that you have uh, that you have chosen. Make sure that they're connected in some way or they all have some sort of story to them. Um, and most of all, have fun, guys. Um, I'm available for a Google Meet if you need to. Um, otherwise, you can contact me for an email um, via email uh, if you have any questions. Okay, have fun, guys.